I've been practicing being more Judith this week. <laughs> by which I mean I've been being much there more... was no sign of it this morning when you were being spectacularly annoying was there <laughs> I know I'm sorry about that <laughs> we will tell we will tell the listener in a minute because it's quite funny but anyway go on uh, so I've been practicing being more direct and honest and having stronger boundaries oh my word I know and one of Own It, your business in your life, with Nicola Cairncross and Judith Morgan. In this podcast, we're going to cover everything you need to embrace to become a successful entrepreneur, marketing, money, and much, much more. How to create a business doing just what you love. How to own it, your business and your life. This one will be fast, funny, feisty, and very lively. So sit back and enjoy the show. Right, as you were, caller, show me your big momentum and tell me about it. It's absolutely gorgeous today, my momentum screen. Look at it. Yes, it's beautiful. Where is it? Myanmar. Okay. Myanmar. Myanmar. I don't know where that is. I do, I do. Myanmar is what we used to call Jakarta, I think. Hang on, Myanmar. We used to call it... India. I'm Googling it. No, hang on a minute. It's further... East and that towards Australia. Hang on a second, computer going slow. Talk about something else while I'm looking up where Myanmar is. Okay, well, what we're looking at for our gentlemen... oh, hang on, sorry, it's Burma, so it's in Asia. Used to, we used to call it Burma, it's, so it's above Thailand and to the right of Nepal. We don't call it Burma anymore. We call it Myanmar. Well, it's just beautiful. It's a, a picture of a forest with lots of temples poking up, and two of the temples are lit up in gold. And, you know, uh, 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 just stunning. It's lovely. It's, Isn't it interesting that you see that as a forest? I only, when you went, it's a forest. I went, forest? It, funnily enough, I hadn't even... I can see why you think it is. I can see why it probably is. But it just doesn't look like a forest to me. Isn't that strange? Does it look like ground? No, it doesn't. It looks like a city. <laughs> well, it's got lots of trees in it. Yes, it could be a city. You're absolutely right. But it's stunning. It's like something out of Game of Thrones. <laughs> You know, something you can't imagine that there's any anywhere this fantastical and beautiful in the world, but there it is. Well, they're all they're all sort of temples, but they're all lit up, aren't they? Uh, yeah. They they've done rather well. I can see the trees in the foreground. I'm with you. Whenever you see a successful business, oh, that's nice. Uh, I saw that quote earlier in the week. Whenever you see a successful business, someone once made a courageous decision. Right. I think we are going to have to take a screenshot of this to show our lovely listeners. Oh, yes. That would be nice. Yes. yes. So if they come to, if you come to ownitthepodcast.com, um, you will see the picture that we're talking about that is so stunning. Indeed. Good stuff. Okay. So what's your week been like then? Well, um, I haven't really got anything to tell you about my week. No, that's not true. I was going to start by talking about um, the couple of the therapists from was it last week or the week before yes about turning your your one-to-one therapy practice into a one-to-many business yeah because they've come up with we now know what the book's called and it's and who they are and i'm just going back to amazon again it's called why clever people do dumb things and then it says the nine steps something or other there's nine steps in this which means this is going to work fantastically well in the way that we hoped it might. Program. Yes. And it's only nine steps, thank the Lord. <laughs> Hang on. Uh, you, gives you, you which gives you an introduction month and two months off. Well, can you, yeah. can you talk, talk for a bit? While, oh, here we go. Why clever people do dumb things. Nine steps, or we love a step, to help you feel as successful on the inside as you appear on the outside. And I can tell you that I've downloaded the free bit it's fantastically written. Are they originally Brits or are they proper Aussies? You know, yeah, proper Aussies. Yeah, uh, it, it, Lindsay's a good chap who can write a fine sentence. I've enjoyed the free bit and I've put it on my wish list, and it's only one ninety nine on Kindle. Which I have to say, Lindsay's a stonking bargain. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's that's really good, isn't it? And um, yeah. because, because you know they, she found she found our comments very helpful. So we've had I've had positive feedback on that. 
Well, I think also putting it into perspective, actually, I wasn't sure. I was a bit dismissive. I went, I think, if you're a therapist, you should just stay a therapist and find other ways to make money in the other lanes of the world highway. But I definitely think this could be turned into a programme and actually could be a route out of the one-to-one. So I'm, I'm cheered by discovering what the book is called. That's yeah. one thing about my week, which is what this thing is called. My other thing about this week, I've already written my newsletter about tomorrow. So readers of that will have heard this will have read this before they hear this if that makes sense yeah um um something really really fascinating has happened in my diary in the last three weeks and i've alluded to it before which is i've uh, uh, suddenly got this influx of men booking appointments to talk to me and you'll remember that when i started out i had quite a lot of men remember yeah and then they disappeared and now they're coming back again but the men that are coming back are not like the men they were um, and this shouldn't be remarkable in 2017, but it is, which is the point of my newsletter tomorrow, which is all three of the ones that I've spoken to and two of whom I've taken on so far and the third one I expect to be working with, they both, all three of them, w- um, work their hours around their children. Wow. Now, having listened to women in this position for a thousand years and a thousand times, it's wonderful to hear it from three men in a week. Yeah, and and, and quite uh, very well, very unusual, isn't it? Because men. Well, so it still is unusual. It still yeah. is unusual. It so shouldn't be, Nicola, is it? But no. you know, there's one guy. He's got an office. He goes there for nine thirty to two thirty, and he leaves at two thirty. Now, all of my mum clients leave at two thirty, and it's a very frustrating thing to do. But he didn't moan about this, and they don't moan either, to be fair. But, it, you know, for your working day, if you to, to stop at 2.30 when you're trying to build something, it's quite testing. However, 9.30 to 2.30, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, five hours a day, five days a week, 35 hours a week, it still is a decent-sized working week in which you can achieve something. But I, why, this is, why this is remarkable is it's just so rare. Oh, God, I hope it's the beginning of a whole wave of this, but it's so rare for me to hear men say that uh, and so normal for women to say that and if this is a an indication of a shift from it being a gender issue to be, it being a parent issue i nobody would be happier than me yeah absolutely well i built you know i built the money gym in in between 9 30 and 2 30 oh it's possible it's definitely yeah. possible you just don't hear men say it no, you no, you don't. They they tend to think that they have to do the traditional full working. Well, and, and and also in 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 my father's day, for instance, I don't think he would have wanted to do it. I think he was thrilled to bits. He had a couple of jobs that then when he got home, my mother had already done all the difficult stuff. <laughs> yes, <laughs> all, all the boring stuff. <laughs> yes, yeah, all the messy, smelly, dirty, tear your hair out stuff had been done yeah. by, by my mum. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Tell me about your week. Well, it's been quite a quiet week. I've been I've been actually working. Um, I'll tell you more about what I've been working on in fuel in fuel your fire. Uh, but uh, I had a dinner with my landlady, which was extremely pleasant because her husband is um, away in Scunthorpe, where they have a flat. They just bought a flat. Oh, and, be, still, uh, be still my beating heart, Scunthorpe. No, no. Well, that's what a lot of people here do. They buy a house here or they build a house here, but they like to keep a foot in the in the UK property market. So they sell their house, their big house in England, buy a decent house here, and then keep a flat in England for when they go back which means very sensibly that it's appreciating in value so that's very good and so we talked property because she had actually um, got, had to go and view 42 flats in Scunthorpe. I didn't think there were that many <laughs> before she found one she loved but um, and she had s- several testing ups and downs so we had some good property discussions which I haven't had for a long time which was rather nice and uh, yeah a good dinner the goat was the goat was off the cockerel was off so I ended up with um, Cleftico in the end which was nice. It was very nice. It's been cooked in the oven with potatoes. It was lovely. And then I've been practicing being more Judith this week, <laughs> by which I mean I've been being much there more... There was so, no sign of it this morning when you were being spectacularly annoying, was there? <laughs> I know. I'm sorry about that. We will tell, we will tell the listener in a little bit because it's quite funny. But anyway, go on. Uh, so I've been practicing being more direct and honest and having stronger boundaries. Oh, my word. I know. And one of those um, occasions worked out very well, and one of them worked out very badly. <laughs> well, I don't think it's going to work terribly well at the beginning, because the people that we've always rolled over for don't like it when we suddenly get all butch and stand up for ourselves. Well, it was new people. So, well, fairly new people, both of them. So mm, I Well, that, that, that's what I would call a test to see if yes. you mean it. Yes. Well, I, I, I did. I was invited to dinner um, with a, a new couple I've met here. 
And they were offering, he, he only eats meat and potatoes. He doesn't eat any vegetables or salad at all. Mm. And they were offering for me to come around to view their new treatment room they've set up. And um, they, off, they were going to make sweet and sour chicken with rice and chips. And I thought, I can't think of a meal I'd like this. <laughs> so, why, why did they bill that in advance? Wasn't it a strange thing when people say, come round for sweet and sour chicken, rice and chips? It gives you a well, chance I, to I say, think, you I know, think, I'm busy, I'm washing my hair. <laughs> I think she was thinking that it would be an attraction because obviously she was making it from scratch with, you know, homemade batter and everything. And I thought, that is an awfully carbs-laden dish. I'd much mm. rather have chicken and salad or, or water. Yeah. You know? yeah whatever but i hate sweet and sour my least favorite thing sweet and sour so um so i just thought okay well uh, there's lots of things wrong with i I thought so i just went back and i said i've got a better idea i don't like sweet and sour and i don't want you to go to all that trouble for something that is not my favorite dish on the planet so why don't i pop round, bring the bottle and you know view your new treatment room and then we can all toddle off down the village where we can all eat exactly what we like and they took that quite well, so that was that was nice. Um, so that was that was the good example, was it? Yes, that was a good example. Okay, okay. Well, that is a good example. And then the next one was someone who I get on very, very well with. I've met several times on the cruise, sending me a seven-minute video to watch about speaking in Amsterdam. Now he organises um, trips for speakers to go to various places. It's um, a week there and then at the end of the week you do a speaking gig but in the meantime they've put you on to radio television local local radio local television etc etc and and you've had some speaking training as well well obviously there's a cost to this because you know you can't go somewhere for a week and stay for, for nothing and I just thought to myself I'm just I'm never going to do this I'm never going to go and speak in Dubai because I don't agree with it for a start I know the guys don't have a problem with it but I do and um, I I really I'm not in a situation where I want to go to Amsterdam and spend a week learning how to be a better speaker and then ending up on Netherlands television or Netherlands radio. (laughs) There's no point point in me watching this seven minute video. So I went back. Now, now, you know, that's very Judith like, isn't it? I'm not even going to watch a seven minute video. (laughs) I I, I skipped through it to be fair, because I was looking for the, the, the investment required and there was no investment mentioned. So, you know, it was still very ambiguous. And I went back to him and I said, look, I've skipped through your video. I've only skipped through it because I just wanted to see what the investment was. But I can tell you now, I never, I'm never. i unlikely to do this and I'm not going to ever want to speak in Dubai for the following reason. And he got really quite upset with me. <laughs> he said I'd been very harsh and dismissive and closed-minded. Here, there's closed-minded again. That cropped up, crops up again. And I just thought, oh, you know, really... I, I do. Well, I do think we must when we when we go direct honest. Um, actually, all you were saying to that was no, thank you, uh, which isn't terribly direct or honest. It's quite polite. <laughs> I think the, the person on either end of that, and I've fallen foul of this a couple of times on Facebook this week as well. Is you know, is, is the answer to that is okay, and move on, isn't it? You know, trying to bend the world to fit our version of it, which is what he was trying to do, i.e. he thought it was a good idea for you and thought you should look harder at it, that's never going to work, is it? Oh, I don't know. It, you know, it just it left... Uh, we had a very, you know, sad conversation. It was like he was really upset with me and I just, you know, and I, he said, all that, you know, I said, well, it's been a harsh year, you know. Why was he... Why, was he why, why did he think it would be good for you to do this thing? I don't know. Well, because I'm a speaker, I suppose. And, it, you know, but the thing is, it was, it was a direct thing to try and it was a, a, a direct um a, a contact to just try and sell me something yes to, to sell to your friends absolutely did you find out how much the investment was in the end no we you know i never got around to that but um the point was it, you know why did he get so upset you know mm. it, and it, do you have an answer or no did i say? don't really know he no, just it was very yeah. harsh very harsh well that's not too bad <laughs> if somebody says that's very harsh is that bad well, it may be, it may be, I, I felt misunderstood, Judith, and we all know how much we don't Oh, like. that is very painful. My brother has an expression, actually. It's, it's sort of a, become immortal in our family, which is when, when one makes a, a pronouncement that's quite in your face, he will often say, harsh, but fair. Because, of <laughs> course, because, you know, you can be direct. Direct sometimes feels and sounds harsh, but is often fair, i.e. the truth, or quite close to it. Yeah, 
Like, why should I watch a seven minute sales video? Well, that's <laughs> a bit harsh, actually, because you don't mind video and he's a mate of yours. So I might have watched a seven minute, but I don't think there's anything wrong with saying, I don't want to go to the Netherlands to learn how to do this. I don't want to be a star on Netherlands television. And I don't want to go to Dubai for my for the following reasons. Yeah, no, no. You know, but, but I wish you all the best with your fantastic offer. Yes, exactly. And he's doing really well with it. And I know lots of people who have done it. So in, they, that, in that case, I think it's very odd that he was upset that you wouldn't. Because yeah. If, if he's doing well with it, good on him. Yeah, absolutely. I wish him well. He's a lovely person. That's the thing. I'm well, sure. Yeah. He, he, he seemed to, ta- I tell you what, it's coming back to me now. He, he seems to take exception to the fact that I thought he was trying to sell me. Well, what else is he doing? If yeah. he's trying to get me to watch a sales video, of course he's trying to sell me. You know, yeah. I haven't heard from him for the last two or three as years. As far as I'm concerned, these are all his issues, not yours. Yeah, no, I know. Moving on then, so what's your fuel your fire this week? Right, okay, so I've organised my diary for August, uh, and this is our last call together before my holiday. Oh. Um, more about which more later. Um, I've set aside the days I'm going to write my book on. I've got three in the first week, then four in each of the next three weeks, which is 15 days in total. Then I'm having a week off from absolutely everything, so no client call. I don't do one-to-ones in August anyway, mostly. I'm not even doing small business big magic in the last week. I'm going to have a proper week off with nothing in it, apart from our show notes, I think. Um, but the time when I wrote this was earlier in the week. The time between now and then is frantic and complex with a lot of different types of activity in it. And last week, remember, I was excited about doing my friend's accounts on Sage. Oh, yes. Well, this week I've got to doing her personal expenses to see if there's anything in there that we can put through the business. And that requires doing it on a spreadsheet from her Santander bank statements. And I have to say, I'm not loving that at all. I'm having to force myself to do that. Oh, it's not, about it, yeah. yeah, not nice at all. The, some, the business statements came off Santander beautifully dark and big. The private bank statements come off small, pokey small writing in pale grey. It's like looking for a needle in the proverbial. I'm not enjoying it at all, and I have to bribe myself. I won't be able to watch today's episode of Suits until I've done October, November, and December, for instance. Oh. I, I, I feel for you because I'm setting up zero at the moment and I've, I've hired someone to help me because mm. I've, I've found someone, Bean Ninjas, do yes. a one-off setup service, which is brilliant. Good. I'm working with a UK guy. He's very good. and um, it, But he's exporting all of the bank statements back to last. Luckily, I only started using my business bank account at Christmas. So we, we've been able to import all the statements from there. But the PayPal goes right back to last September. Yeah. He's, he's able to export PayPal statements in different currencies. And then uh, Zero is going to do something wonderful with them. But I'll, I will have to at some point go through and reconcile but that's just a question of hitting a button and saying that's a fee that's a that's an income that's an income less that's a fee it's a bank fee you know that's yeah yeah, uh, yeah. it's i'm really yeah. looking forward to that actually well it's an interesting I, thing because i you know i love sage with every fiber of my being mm. but um it, it's a it's a faff because it only works on a pc now that in itself is not a problem because i'm a windowsy type of a person but whenever I think I might be able to manage in future on something like, say, an iPad Pro that doesn't even have a disk drive anymore that you can put the Sage disk again, even if you could use it on there, I think, well, perhaps I'll go to zero. And then when I go and have a sniff around zero, I think, I don't want to pay for software as a service for the rest of my life. You don't want to wear what you don't want to work? I don't want to pay for software as a service for the rest of my life. Yeah, I know. But it's so wonderful to use. It's lovely. And the other, so the other, even so, I I mean, a sage, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. One big chunk of money years ago that I can use forever. Software as a service, mm, resistant to business model on the client end, customer end. Well, see, I'm the opposite. I'd rather pay a little bit every month than have a big fat chunk of it going out. I know you would. And in a way, that's good because, you know, I'm always banging on about um, sellers you buy. You buy like that. So we must find a way for you to sell more, even more like that. Anyway, back to your point. Well, the, uh, the thing I was going to say is that the one thing I do have to do is do exactly from um, last June to Christmas on my personal account mm, because yeah. I just couldn't face doing it. One, you know, when Steve died, I just I let that slip, and I had a big chunk of cash when we came to Greece, and um, I just thought I'm just not going to do it. I'm going to let myself off. But what I've got to do now is now tell him how much money I lent the I lent the new business from yeah. my personal bank. Do you know what? I think you'll like it to be honest with you, and I'll tell you why. It's so much easier to do your own because you can 
more likely to remember what you did. I have to go into this woman's PayPal account and work out what the hell she was oh, spending yeah. her, money, her money on. But uh, I know when I get to the end of this, I'm going to give her a good nagging. I'm going to be able to save her quite a lot of money because there's all sorts of extraneous things going out that I know she doesn't use. I think you'll enjoy it, Nicola, because it, it, I do think you'll enjoy it. It's cleansing. Yes, I like I do. doing. My, I like. I do it for myself. I like doing it for myself. Yeah. No, I do too, and I'm right up to date with my business and my personal accounts from um, this. The start of I the understand. March, I understand. March, yeah. but I'm just yeah. going to do the backtracking for last. Yeah. Week. Yeah. yeah. I've got it all printed off. I do. I'm doing it in little bits. You know. So well, I, I can I tell you something that makes you feel. I can tell you something that makes you feel a lot better. I, the, the period that I'm doing for this woman is 18 months from oh, the first of June. Wait a minute. First of June 2015. Oh. Oh, that's to right. the, th- the 30th of November 2016. So it, it's it's so old that nobody can remember anyway. No, that's a problem. Yeah. I've already spotted some things that I can actually stop using. So yeah. I, it's firing me up to do that. But I don't think this was what you wanted to tell me in this section, was it? No, it isn't. No, but I, you are we, are we done with your fuel fire? What, yeah, what? yeah. Tell me yours. You're not being paid to do this. This is a favour for a friend. Is this correct? Well, I'm returning quite a lot of serious favours. I'm seriously in favour debt for this woman. So oh, okay. all, all I'm telling you is that adding accounting back into my week, which is marketing, coaching, uh, planning to write a book, uh, podcasting, show notes, you know, adding that back in. It is has made it all a bit frantic. Is what you may, to say. I feel like you're working full time again. Well, uh, yeah, a bit, a, a bit frantic, and, and also. You know, I'm coming up to my end of term where, you know, you have that um, illusion of, it's like Christmas, you have that illusion of, oh, well, everything organised by Monday the 31st of July because I'm having a month off, you know, yeah, so it's that. Yeah. Good stuff. Well, what's fueled by fire is, is something that's caused me an awful lot of extra work, which I, I sort of knew it would, but I didn't really realise quite how methodical and, and organised I was going to have to be. I was in... Um, one of the mastermind groups I'm in, and this chap was to, who I respect enormously because it's the guy who makes my app. He said that he turned his annual conference recordings into a virtual summit, and he runs it every month now. And he laid out how he did it using um, Ever Webinar, which is a webinar jam product, and his, inf- you know, his, his Infusionsoft and and all that stuff. And I just thought, oh my god, I you know I could do that for our summit recordings last year and turn it into a recurring virtual summit and then you know because he'd laid out how he'd done it using ever webinar and i've got ever webinar and i've got infusionsoft it was all laid out step by step you know and i thought i could see instantly how to do it but when you're doing it for 18 recordings oh, no. <laughs> well do we have to do it for 18 can't you make it a cut down version of that the nine yeah, best um, ones or something? see see the thing is judith i'm an I'm, my ocd means that when i launch onto a project i am a completer finisher i you know i can't do that <laughs> i'd have to do all 18 but the point is that it's really got me very excited because i've started running the ads already because i set up the first bit i thought i'm not gonna do all this work without knowing whether it's going to fly on facebook and so i've started doing it and and the early signs are that it's going to bring me leads at a very much reduced cost and the thing is that it is thinking the thing i want to talk about in client challenge of the week is is um offers that convert and I really needed something on the front end of my membership site that would bring in the right kind of people because I think that's where the the problem has been has been in not converting to my members quite as well as I would have liked because I'd be bringing in people who are too um, what's the word I'm looking for too established businesses and they don't want to join a seventy nine dollars a month membership site and get help from the very beginning. It's the people who want to become laptop lifestyle entrepreneurs who join that website, join that membership site. So I'm very excited that this front end marketing initiative could A, self-liquidate, i.e. pay for itself, and B, bring in the right kind of people who might then want to go on to join my membership site. My okay. fuel has been fired. No, my okay. fire has been fueled. <laughs> okay. Right. I'm writing this down. Front end marketing initiative. Yes. I also wrote down, I'm so methodical and organized. I mean, don't make me laugh. No. <laughs> Go on, tell the story about this. Yeah, uh, this morning, uh, it said in my diary that the podcast was nine o'clock. And it's normally 10 o'clock. And I thought that can't be right. That must be a mistake. So I PM'd Nicola on Facebook and said, I feel sure this is an error, but my diary is saying nine o'clock, not 10 o'clock. Um, what, do you, what do you reckon? And you go, yeah, it's an error. She said, I could do earlier. And I go, um, I could do earlier if you like, because I know sometimes you'd like to start earlier. Okay, um, what, what time would suit you best? And you went, 
15 minutes earlier or something, didn't you? From a quarter in, to, in her reply was, her, no, 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 you didn't say in, that's the whole point. Her reply was a quarter to, question mark. And I went, and she never answered the question ever, a quarter to what? So we're, we're grappling here with the time difference. So, I mean, 15 minutes wasn't worth saving you. I don't, anyway. I exasperated with you this morning. Exasperated. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. And, and I couldn't be asked to explain it. In it was typing uh, too long. It was going to take too long. So <laughs> a quarter to a quarter to what? The next hour, obviously. <laughs> no, not obviously. No. You mean the one that's 16 minutes when you haven't had coffee and I haven't got my eyes in yet? No. <laughs> And then, and then you said 11 o'clock and I realised I had an appointment at 11 and I, you know, because we, we have to go 11 Greek, 11 English. Yeah. All that stuff. So Nightmare. Yes. Would you like to showcase your business, product or service to highly engaged solopreneurs and business owners every week? We can offer a 30-second mid-roll slot and sponsorship branding on our website and in our private Facebook group. Just contact Nicola and nicolacairncross.com for more details. So, client challenge of the week then. Yeah, tell me. Well, I haven't got one because nobody's um, sent one in. But I thought we could talk a bit more about the offers that convert things because I obviously I've been working through my my, off, my membership offer doesn't convert very well. And so I've been thinking, as I, as I say, about, you know, the things that I can put out on the front end to bring in the right kind of people who are likely to want the offer. Um, but they got me thinking about the whole um, offer that converts thing again and how clients agonize about their first thing so much that it takes them ages to get their first offer out and it may not work it or an offer that converts may stop working so for example my be everywhere online offer went like crazy at first from facebook um, ad traffic but then it stopped so i don't know whether you exhaust a, a pool of people um and then you have to move on to a new pool of people and then i was thinking about how do you keep new ones coming? But then I was thinking all of that is quite exhausting. You know, I think if people knew that they were going to have to do all that, then they would give up before they start. And then I was thinking, well, your situation is, is quite different. I mean, you've had the same back end, if you like, the coaching, and you've mm. had your two groups and everything. But mm. you do consistently, you send out your newsletter, you, you, you do a lot of stuff on social media. So you don't really do anything that proactively brings you where you have to pay for, pay for traffic is what I'm saying. No. And your SEO, because we've talked about SEO, because I mean, for, it, your SEO is really working, isn't it? Whereas I looked at my SEO the other day. And yeah, but, my... but, but, that, but before we go into yours, let's go to that point about the SEO, because last week uh, you said I need to talk to your woman and then I copied you in on the email that she sent me back, Charlotte, who I think may be a listener. What a really interesting point she made in there, didn't she, about sometimes it takes two years for SEO to work. Yeah. Well, you, I think you have to wait for updates. You know, Google have to, you have to wait for the next algorithm change for, for any changes you've made on your site to take effect. I mean, that is, I mean, most businesses, most all of my clients would be so upset if they knew, you know, they're all, quite a lot of them are obsessed with SEO and I go, oh, yeah. don't, don't, don't panic. And of course, my advice was, oh, don't worry about it. Never brought me anything. And then suddenly it brought me a huge rash. And when I asked Charlotte why it was, she said, oh, sometimes it can take two years for that to happen. Yeah. And, and I think my advice would be different now with that intel, which would be, do it by all means, but be prepared for it might take two years. Yeah, and it's, it's so interesting because everything we know about SEO tells us that constantly updated relevant content, <clears throat> and, and that's what we use. That's why we started blogging in the first place back in. Well, that's why. I, I mean, the fact that, that that wasn't working, and I hinted that alluded to this last week, why I stopped blogging pretty much actually as well, um, because as you said, the Facebook thing was working better for me. Uh, you do get all the organic traffic. And and it is. Let me have a look at your organic traffic because I've got access to your organic traffic in my. Um... Well, we could go to the we could go to the point you were about to make and talk about you. 
<laughs> well, the, the, the point is, when I look at my analytics, you know, I've actually, since January, every single week, twice a week, my blog has been having new, unique content added to it. And it's multimedia content now. It's, it's a transcription, it's audio, and it's video. And you would think that that would send my SEO through the roof. And actually, I can see well, it. I mean, if you listen to Charlotte, it might take two years for it to send it through the roof. That's true, and I hadn't considered that. But the main thing is that I can see that it's my traffic is dwindling, whereas it should be going in the opposite direction. So I can't quite understand that, and I don't. I only know two SEO teams that I trust. So that's why I was in, interested in your, in your woman and having perhaps mm. having a chat with her. Mm. SEO is is a dark art. It really is, and you've got to be really, really careful. If you're going to hire a firm to do it, you have to know that they're not going to be doing things like building blog network and linking back and all that stuff. So um, you know, it's it's. I'm looking for my dates now. Here we go, audience. So yeah, I was going to look at yours as well. So I can see that my traffic is dwindling. So let's let's just take this back a bit because it's all about having an offer that converts and. How are you going to get eyeballs to see that offer? You've got two ways. You work for it or you pay for it. I've been paying for it up until now, which is why I haven't been bothered about blogging so much. But now blogging is happening as a byproduct of my activities, my, you know, my vzine activities, my podcasting activities, my social media activities. So you'd think that, that it would all be going up, the traffic to the websites. But we've been talking about this, haven't we? How tra- websites are becoming less and less important in the whole customer to sale funnel thing you've got a very high bounce rate there so you bring them and they click away quickly well that you've got to remember that i get a lot of bot traffic i get a lot of um f- yes. uh, fake yes. traffic. so yes. that's why yeah. the bounce rate's high okay okay if i mean if you look at july let's look at th- a three month period that's why i wanted to show you because it's oh hang on what's going on there then oh that looks good Hang on, oh, no. I'm on the wrong page, obviously. Okay. <laughs> so, I, so I'm intrigued about why your SEO is improving. And I don't know. Oh, uh, it's all right. I'm looking at the wrong page here, wrong website. Your SEO is getting better and it's bringing you the right kind of clients, whereas my SEO is dwindling. And well, uh, let's not get overexcited here. I've had a rash in the last three weeks. And because we've talked about it here, I asked Charlotte to explain and... Charlotte gave us some useful stuff for you, which I, I asked her permission to share with you, and she said yes, so that we, we could look at what phrases I'm being found for. The interesting thing that she said was, um, you know, it, it can take two years, and that's, but uh, since I had the rash in the last month, I haven't got it coming up. Ah, oh, there's a reason for that, of course, which is they can't put themselves online in my diary because it's offline for all of us. But anyway, there's a, there's a thought. So everything says put yourself into my diary for a freebie and they can't do that for the month of August. So I won't see that. I won't see that result in August unless they're so desperate that they email me from the contact form and go, I want to book in with you, but I can't because your diary's offline. Now, um, I was going to say something else here as well. Uh, I've forgotten. Oh, yes. That thing that she said to me about you've had 286 clicks from a randomly named, not very well written article. Yeah. No, that was interesting. I mean, I, I've got two or three blog posts that bring most of my traffic. And on one of them, it's bringing absolutely the wrong kind of traffic because it's bringing people who are checking out a multi-level marketing company. Mm. And mm. so I've managed to monetize that post by putting a lot of affiliate links in, in that to yes. people that would teach the kind of thing that these people would be interested in. And I wish, yeah. I'd, wish I'd done that two or three years before, I can tell you, because it's one yeah. of my main sources of income now. Yeah, yeah. But my, my thinking about my funnel from, from organic traffic or paid traffic through to an opt-in through to joining my membership site, because that's one of my funnels, I'm, you know, I'm looking at ways to get the right kind of traffic and what offer is the right kind of offer that A, will convert and B, the, the bring me the right kind of people for my back-end offer. Because clients listening, people listening, it's a bit rambling this, this client challenge of the week, but bear with us. You've got to get your eye. You've got to get the eyeballs to come. The traffic. Now, how you do that? You either work for it or you pay for it. Then you've got to have an offer that gets people to give you their name and email. Because without that, or without the um, option to remarket to them, which you can do with a remarketing pixel, or you could use something like Push Push Crew, you know, that, like we do. 
um, where you can push notifications to people or you can get them to opt in. So you've got to get some, have some mechanism on your site to enable you to remarket to the people that you've worked for or paid for to come in the first place. Then, so you've got to get something that, that converts there and then you've got to get a first product to sell them. And that can be anything from a physical product through to an information product through to a whatever. And your offer that converts is the book yourself into my diary, isn't it? So people either opt in for your newsletter and the next step for them is to book into your diary. Because as soon as you talk to someone, you, you probably convert, what, 50 to 70% of your people who book much, into your diary? Much higher than that. Um, the, I would say close to 100%. The only issue is when. So they're yeah. either hot, hot to trot now or they come later. Right. Now, however, however, we are comparing... Uh, to, Orange apples. Yeah, so different, aren't we? Because I don't pay for my traffic because what I'm selling is me. So I have to give them all my best stuff, all my best of me for free in order to get them to pay for me. And yours is quite the opposite and always must be the opposite as well for you because we're such different human beings. And I've got an example in a minute that explains that. But you are... You know, you're as digital as I am analog. Yeah. So. I tell you the difference. I'm all about the people who are all about the product. There we go. Is that a song? <laughs> <laughs> all about the, what's the, all about the podcast? Remember? Yeah. It's all yeah. about the podcast. All yes. About the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> You're all about the product, so you're all digital. So you've got to find a way of making this stuff you're talking about now work for you. And I don't think comparisons to me is relevant because I do it the opposite way for you, partly out of bloody-mindedness and partly out of, you know, it's me, they're buying me. They're not buying a thing. Yes. See, yeah, see, see what was happening here, you know, because what we're looking at now is a, is a line of Judas traffic with a few spikes in the middle. And the spikes in the middle was when you got discovered by bot, bot traffic. And everyone gets bot traffic now if you've been online for any length of time. So and we set up a filtered view so that we could see, um, you know, Judas traffic without the bots. And that's, you know, it's, it's offering at about... 300 but, visits. You know, honestly, I don't think this is relevant to my business anymore, traffic to my website, because they're just all contacting me directly from Facebook. Really? Well, let's talk about yeah. that then, because in fact, um, one of our listeners, exactly. Wendy, mm -hmm. Wendy Keir. Yes, Wendy, Wendy, Wendy. That's it. Wendy contacted me this morning. She gave me a really nice PDF about Facebook marketing, and it was all about how if you if you're doing facebook advertising and you want people to even give you their name and email it's to, it's asking too much at the beginning so basically the gist of it is that you should give free great value content on facebook and boost it with no exterior links which i'm going to test so because facebook apparently is like youtube they don't want you to go off youtube so the more out external links you put in your ad on or your video on youtube description and the more you put on your facebook to go outside facebook the less they like it so they actually limit your reach if you've got external links in so i was just thinking you know that that how does that work then with with getting traffic to your website and i was just thinking exactly what you just said it means that you have to engage directly on facebook and it has yeah. you away from the efficiencies of email automation and right back into analog one-to-one -one interactions again yay <laughs> you'll love it i knew you'd like it well i wouldn't just love it i've just never steered away from it yeah so let's turn this into something that might be useful for someone who's just getting started with a business well, I'd like to reiterate my theory. I've got, I've got something I want to say, actually. Go on, then. Um, I could experiment with going your route, all about the digital, with my book. Because that's a product. Yes, it is. So I could have a flirt with the kind of nonsense you involve yourself with for, <laughs> the, for the book, maybe. Um, and that would give me a direct comparison of analog Judith with digital Judith. Yes. Now, let me just re recap my memory. Is there VAT on books? There is on digital books, isn't there? Uh, if you sell it from yourself from your own website, I, and it doesn't take your turnover, I, I don't think I would. I don't know. 
I think I think you need to have something um, a private Facebook group for readers of your book. Oh, I've got that already. Got that already. Good, good, good. So that takes it out of the one hundred percent digital and the VAT. Oh. oh, Nicola, heaven's sake! I'm an accountant. Why are you teaching me to suck eggs? <laughs> but um, yes, you're right. Then you then you could uh, you could sell it from as you're going to be selling it from your website. You could do flirt with a little bit of um, well, maybe, maybe. Yeah. Um, or let's go. Let yeah, let's go back to the point, which is uh, what's in this for the listener? What are we really talking about? Oh, I know what I was going to say. It goes back to the thing I said to you about six weeks ago, which you were a bit flummoxed with, which is if I was starting again now, I probably wouldn't even have a website. They're all on Facebook. Yeah, because I'm starting to realise that Facebooks don't work very well on mobile devices. Do they? <laughs> I, was on, I was on Social Chain's website, you know, um, Steve Bartlett, Everyday Steve, I'm completely obs- uh, uh, f- following him on YouTube, watching all his videos. He's like a, he's like a British Gary Vaynerchuk. And um, I went to his website for the first time the other day, and I, re- I, f- I realized myself, I've been actually following him on every single social media platform for the last three months, but I haven't ever visited his website. Well, there you go. And when I did visit his website, it wasn't very easy to use on a mobile. Well, uh, do you know, that was a question I've been wanting to ask you for a very long time. And if you don't know the answer, one of our listeners might know the answer. When I'm using my iPad, which is my only mobile device, and scrolling through Facebook mainly, but not exclusively, and hitting on links that take me to another place, but through Facebook, that makes sense. It's so slow, I can't wait. Well, it's interesting you see that, say that because Facebook have just introduced a new ad optimization thing, which is where you're not optimizing for clicks, where it shows it to people who click, you know, lots of things. It's actually now optimizing for, for landing page view, which is only showing it to people who not only click, but then wait for the other website to load. Oh, God. I know, which means, no, I mean, you know, that's interesting that they, they realize that there is a real problem with people clicking away from social media sites to people's websites, which then take forever to load. Yeah. So well, they take forever to load in the Facebook environment. It could be that, or it could be that the website just takes forever to load. I mean, my, I know that my my website isn't particularly mobile responsive. Well, I know that, and I, I, I know that if I were to, click on a link to my website in my, say, Facebook sharing of my newsletter, it would load much more slowly than it would if I just went to my website on my iPad, if that makes sense. Yeah. So it's, it's about the going through. It's not just my website or anybody's website. It's all those interesting, juicy, clicky type of things. I don't want to use the word clickbait, but the things where it looks like an interesting article and you click on it, it takes so long to load. I, I can't wait. I know. But so all of this is still not... So, ideal. so you've got, no, it's people, not ideal. It's not you've ideal. Got quite a lot to contend with here. You've got to decide whether you're going to whether you're going to work for your traffic or pay for it. Then you've got to make sure that the offer that you make, in somehow, in some way, allows you to recontact those people who've shown an interest. And then you've got, to, and then that offer might not carry on working forever because things change. I mean, I I watch Bernadette Door with interest, and she's always making new new offers to to bring new people in. And I I thought to myself the other day, that's exhausting. And a lot of people, if they knew they were going to have to do that, would would not be that interested. Mm. But so, but so just be aware that the first offer you make may not work. Uh, an offer you make that worked for a while may stop working and it's a good idea to keep coming up with new offers depending on what's happening on the landscape you know so so for example amazon e-commerce is really hot at the moment any everyone and his dog is coming out on an amazon course and um but the, the trick is to keep the same back end so for example your coaching is your back end my membership site my back end um but you just have to keep coming up with those front end offers and it's not as onerous as it sounds, because if you're curious and interested, you can see the trends coming. I don't know if it's been any help this, but we'll find out, won't we? Because they'll talk. Well, about- I, I think I'll tell you where it is interesting. What we're saying is we both understand quite a lot about this. You more than me on the digital side. We have strong interests and opinions on this topic and we're still debating it and will forever because it's, um, well, I don't want to say minefield. It's, um, it's a big, complex topic. 
And there's no one size fits all thing. I mean, for example, you know, my blog's not working as well as it used to. Yours is working brilliantly. So well, I think I, I, what, what, what makes you say it's working brilliantly? I, I don't, I don't feel that at all. Well, you're getting 300 visitors a week, and some of them are must be taking action. Well, you're getting 300 visitors a week, aren't you? Uh, 500, I think. Well, there you go. But my, I mean, do you get people opting in for your newsletter on your website? Not many. No. Some. No, I mean, there's been, a, there's been a rash of late, but no. But I'll tell you what I do think is interesting, and I'm in two minds about this, and I really seriously want to think about this, is if, if, if uh, the rise and rise of the importance of Facebook in my marketing, I was going to say life and marketing, but that's sort of the same thing. Um, it, it, I really quite fancy this idea i mean you could you know people can opt into my mailing list from my facebook page they don't have to go to my website to opt into my mailing list no so i and actually interesting use of the word boost i you said just now i saw somebody say you should never boost i'll see if i can find that article for you well you should you shouldn't boost using the boost button though because they do it ah, doesn't yes. it doesn't it yeah. doesn't give you the right targeting okay but that was, it. That, that was what i read but what i was thinking was Instead of revamping my website, which might cost me, I don't know, a thousand pounds, imagine I put that into using my Facebook page properly as Facebook intended. Yeah, that's an interesting thought. And the other thing is, I don't know that anyone really needs um, a, a complicated website anymore. I think you just no. need a front page and a blog. Yeah. You know, because uh, most of the themes now put all the information on one page. Anyway, which, we which, which is one of the reasons why I haven't revamped it, because I hate that, because I can't find any of the information. Yeah, I know. Well, I, I like the ones Nicola Bird's doing. They're very pretty. But anyway, we must crack on, because we're running out of time, and I've got some... Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, crack on. Uh, I, uh, have you got a word of the week? I have. It's renewal, and it comes from Chris Barrows. He, do, he did his July newsletter, which you can find on the resources part of his website at coachbarrow.com. No, no, no. I'll link to it here. Yeah, okay, cool. And it was all about how entrepreneurs, and it's, it is linked to this, because it talks about how we get, we get all we get on, one part of the cycle is quest, and we get all excited, and we're, we're, we've come up with a new idea, which I've just come up with, with the virtual summit. Then we go on the adventure, which is implementing the quest and the idea. And then we come to an end, and we go on this sort of entrepreneur's low, which is when the adrenaline floods away, and we, we go into this cocooning mode. And then we spend a bit of time renewing, and then before discovering our next quest. And I thought that was quite an interesting um, way of looking at the entrepreneurial cycle. So, Well, when you sent it to me this morning, I misread what you said, and I thought you were offering it to me as Client Challenge of the Week, and it would have made a good one. So can we do that one on the first week in September when I'm back? Oh, okay. Well, because you and Chris Barrow thing. are questers, and I realised from reading that article that I'm not. No. But I've been through a period, I mean, last week, I was not interested in doing anything new at all. So I was no. in a renewal period. But that man will never lie down and die. So he was writing no. that, 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 <laughs> that post from his perspective, and we're not all like that. That's now, uh, I think we should save that one. I think there's a lovely debate to be had around that one in the first week in September when I'm back, okay? Okay, because you'll have had your renewal period and you'll be fired up. No, I won't have had my <laughs> renewal period. That's the point. I resist his whole thesis. Now, I didn't have a word of the week when we opened the show, but I've, I've put hard in here because one of those dads that I told you about earlier, um, when we had his induction call, uh, he worked me, his, you know, I insist on them all working their way through. What are you doing now? What's it paying? How many of those do you sell? Then he had a lovely... Uh, monthly recurring revenue, but everything else seemed like an awful lot of hard work for a scant return. And I said, what else have you got? And then he told me, and I said, why haven't you done that? And he said, because I've had it in the hard pile, and that's why I'm talking to you. So my word of the week is hard. What's in the hard pile? Because guess what? That's where his good stuff was. Yes, and I did, I mean, I did think twice about this virtual summit, because I thought, oh, that sounds a bit hard. <laughs> 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 Tricky. <laughs> oh, my God. Good stuff. So project updates then. Your book is getting written and the podcast is holding steady. I have tweaked our keywords on the podcast. I'm desperate to get some sort of upward movement because I keep seeing other people's libsyn uh, 
printouts in this mastermind I'm in, and it's hockey sticks all round, except for ours, flat as a bloody blanket. Pancake. Well, if you've tweaked our keywords, prepare, as Charlotte would say, for that to take two years before you see a result. Yes, especially as iTunes have got to update their algorithm, but it's coming soon. Well, you've been promising us that for so oh, long, no, I, well. I go deaf. Can I just say that uh, I finished my Scrivener training, uh, oh, and, and on Sunday, in the middle of the wasp bit my leg incident, I wrote 3,722 3, oh. words, which is far too long for an introduction, but it flowed out of me, and it was something I wanted to say. So um, I don't really believe in shitty first drafts, but it was, a, it was a first draft, let's call it. Oh, how exciting. So you're underway. Mm. I am. And you've the achievement of finishing your Scrivener training 100%. I finished it 100%. However, there was one module I didn't do because it was a 30-minute real-time upload of, of the output to one of the publishing spaces, and I couldn't be bothered to watch that. No, I thought I'd together. save that for when I was ready. That was like watching paint dry, to be honest. Yeah. So who are what's impressed then? Well, you go first, and then because mine is about the five women who are standing to me, standing in to me while I'm away. Okay, um, I'm going to talk very briefly about my new Aussie entrepreneur members in my membership site, who are active, engaged, turning up to the weekly calls, and asking lots of questions. It's an absolute joy. But the other thing that's impressed me is a tool for everyone. I haven't given you a tool for ages, have I? No. Bloomberry.com. B l o o m b e r r y dot com. You can ask three, you can put three phrases in and find out the most asked questions on the internet from your target market. So, for example, if I put in digital nomads, it would see, it would show me on all of the question sites like Quora, what are the top most asked questions around that phrase? And then you get three for free and then you can sign up for more. But how useful would it be to see what your customers are asking online in the exact words they're asking them around your key phrase? There's blog posts titles right there. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. What about you then? Right. I'm just going to give you a quick run through for the benefit of the listener, not you, of the five women who are stepping up to stand in for me in the five weeks while I'm away in August. So the first one is Georgina Noel who is um, an EFT wizard and transformation coach of some magnitude, Nicola, um, you will be impressed when you discover what Georgina charges to work with her these days. And she's based in Jersey, which is in the Channel Islands, near Alderney, that place where you thought you'd been, <laughs> where you thought you'd been to a wedding. Um, next, Joe Dodds, who you know very well. Joe Dodds' this thing is productivity. She also has a podcast of her own. Nicola's been on it. She will be, um, well, Georgina's chatty and Joe will be very efficient as a guest. Followed by Susan Weeks, a client of mine who lives in Yorkshire, who has a website called Podcast Progress. So she will be a good guest as well. She's got a gorgeous Yorkshire accent and is uh, also an internet marketing wizard. Oh. Then your, your digital nomad, Lisa Warner, who if you're not watching her videos on Facebook, that's a terrible mistake because she and her husband, Glenn, are very funny. They document it all on um, Facebook. They've, given, they've sold their home. They're living on a canal barge and they just got back from a holiday in Spain. They are really good value on their videos. You will love Lisa. She's got a cracking sense. So you are watching some people's videos then? Well, uh, her, I watched <laughs> one of hers this week where she just got back from a holiday in Spain. I'll tell you why. You know the thing with Facebook thing, it freezes on a, an image, doesn't it? Yes. Uh, that, with the arrow in the middle and if it's a good image that helps I and mean, of course that's a bit random isn't it uh no you can choose them well she looked absolutely beautiful in this and she'd been following some video on how to tie your hair up in a, a funny scarf thing uh, but she's got such a funny sense of humor and she's such a lovely person it, it's a feel-good vid her weekly thing but you i'm really i'm drawing it to your attention is because it's a v-zine effectively so oh, you're okay. you, you know you're going to find a twin there and finally, and here's a note for you, Rosie, Rosie, who's going to come and talk to you, she runs a thing called One Man Band Accounting. Um, she's the, she was the woman, one of the women, who were behind the VAT Moss campaign, which has died an absolute death. I don't know whether it's due to Brexit or not, but if you could find out that thing you just said to me about you've got to have a Facebook group to avoid the VAT, I don't, it's just died a death. We haven't heard anything from that in two years. So find out what the latest is when you're talking to Rosie. So you've got an accountant to end up with. 
<laughs> Perfect. <laughs> well, thank you very much for organising all that. It's no, but so um, who or what's impressed me is Georgina, Joe, Susan, Lisa, and Rosie for picking up the, the, the you know the what is it? You throw down the challenge, the gauntlet, the gauntlet, the baton. Stand, yeah, stand the baton and standing in for me during my August poll. See you all in September, everyone. How marvellous. Have a lovely rest and okay. write that book. I'm looking forward okay. to it. Okay. And what a contradiction in terms that is. Have a rest and write a book. Yeah, go on then. <laughs> okay. See ya. Bye. See ya. Bye. 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 You've been listening to Nicola Cairncross and Judith Morgan. The podcast is called Own It, Your Business and Your Life. Do come and visit us at ownitthepodcast.com. We'd love to hear your feedback. You can find out more about Judith and visit her on her website at judithmorgan.com and you can find Nicola at nicolacairncross.com. 